Alrighty, so in this video, we're going to take a look at how you can use new field automation and GitHub actions to set up a continuous integration pipeline for your .NET project. My name is Vasily Olenik, I'm a senior developer and you're watching the .NET architecture and detailed design series where we are building .NET Core based API using industry's best practices. So let's face it, using YAML for build automation sometimes can be a pain in the ass. Fortunately, we have build automation tools like Nuke that make our life somewhat easier. Over the last couple of days, I've been toying around with Nuke. And in this video, we're going to take a look at two different setups that you can use in your continuous integration process on your project. We're going to use the habit tracker API that we've built in the minimal API core series since it's pretty easy and straightforward to use and contains things that we need. Basically, a .NET Core API, integration tests, unit tests, and all that stuff that's really important in a CI process. Now, to get started with Nuke, you will first have to install it on your local machine. In my case, it's already installed. However, if you're running a Linux machine, besides running this CLI command, you will still have to run the following command also, if it doesn't work for you from the first time. In my case, it didn't work, so I had to run that command. Once you have it installed, you can run the following command, which is nuke.setup. It will ask you a couple of questions like how should the build project be named? In my case, I'll leave it as default. Where should it be located? Also default, I'm going to use the respective version of nuke and I'm going to select habit tracker solution as the solution that I want. It, this will generate this underscore build class library. If you go to your file system, it will be under this folder. Inside you will find a couple of things like the build.cs, configuration, directory build props, targets. What's interesting to us right now is this build.cs class. Inside it is basically our build automation pipeline. I'm going to remove these comments over here since we don't need those. And let's take a look at what we have over here. So we have our main entry point where we execute this specific target, which is in our case compile. And by the way, targets are essentially kind of like steps inside a build process. So our current build process is basically clean, restore and compile. Over here, we basically do nothing right now in any of the steps. So let's try implement something in here. In order to run .NET based commands, you're going to have to run the .NET tasks dot and the specific command that you want. In our case, I want first to clean the solution. Then I want to run a restore in here. So .NET tasks dot restore and over here compile, which is basically .NET tasks build. This is pretty straightforward right now. So I'm going over just the basics. Small addition over here, the restore, I want to run it depends on clean. So in order to run the pipeline, you just go to your terminal, type in nuke, and it will eventually trigger your build. So as you can see, it basically ran the build pipeline, run the steps, clean, restore and compile. This is essentially what you would have got with something like this YAML. This is a simple build YAML over here in GitHub Actions, where we have two steps to restore and build our solution. This is all the basics. Next thing, we also can have parameters. We can specify different parameters either by environment name, or if you want to use, you can have this parameters.json, where you specify the parameters that you want to have. So in our case, let's suppose we want to have a parameter like test, in our case, this is a test value. Now, once we have this, we can go back to our build.cs over here somewhere, just specify that we want a string called test and we want to make it a parameter, which will basically just inject it from our parameters.json. By the way, the neat thing with build is the fact that you can run your build automation pipeline locally and you can also debug it. So in our case, I'm just going to go to the first step over here. I'm just going to say console.writeline and past in test, put a breakpoint over here, go back to our main and debug my build. Once the breakpoint has been hit, we can see that we have our value from the parameters.json. Now I'm going to stop my build, just remove this console write line from over here, remove the test parameter from over here and from the parameters.json. Coming back to build.cs, 
Yeah, this is a basic pipeline that we have in place. It's a valid one nonetheless, but it's really basic. Let me just undo the changes done by nuke.setup and we are gonna take a look at a more complex pipeline over here. So this is the pipeline that's currently running on the main branch for the GitHub repo. And this is basically what it looks like. So we have a pipeline with which runs on Ubuntu latest and it's basically running a setup job it's running a step, build automation step from Nuke, has a couple of steps in here, restore, compile, test, publish test results, and basically shows us all the errors and warnings. How do we achieve that? If we go back to the build.cs, we can see that I have added a couple of extra steps in here. Our first step is cleaning and it basically is a .NET clean. And also we're ensuring that we clean the directory for the test results. Then we're running a .NET restore, then a .NET build, just as previously. And finally, we have our test where we depend on the compile, obviously, and we run the .NET tasks .NET tests. We enable no restore, no build, and set the results directory to our test results directory. Finally, we just publish the test results to the output directory, which is really fine. And it basically results in us running this kind of pipeline where we have a restore, compile, test, publish test results, etc. By the way, this example is running on the habit tracker minimal API that I've built in the side the series dedicated to minimal APIs. So over there, we have the integration tests that run with test containers, basically have Docker. Since GitHub already has Docker installed for its GitHub Actions, it's really amazing that we have this integration and it's really easy to run our tests. Now you'll ask me, how does GitHub understand C Sharp to run this kind of automation? Basically, it does not. On top of the build, sorry. We have a GitHub Actions where we specify the name of the action, the runner, when we want to run it, and the invoked targets. So by adding this attribute over here and running nuke once, basically building the whole thing, it will generate this .github folder over here, which will have the workflow in it. And this is basically an auto-generated workflow that will trigger the whole build automation. And you don't have to mess around with it. It's auto-generated on every nuke run if you have run some, if you added some changes to your setup. Now, with all that, you basically have your build automation pipeline written in C Sharp and then GitHub can understand it and basically run your tests, your restore, your compile and all that stuff. That's really amazing. But what if I have or if you have Docker and basically you want to build a Docker image out of your API and then push it somewhere to some Docker Hub registry? Let's suppose in my case, the public Docker Hub. To do that, I have a separate feature branch over here. So I'm gonna just go to my Nuke branch, check it out. And this in itself is a more complex setup. You can find all the related code inside the description of the video with a link to the GitHub repository. I'm not gonna go over the comments and the utilities parts over there since that's of no interest to us. I'm gonna basically go over the pipeline and how it's built over here. So the build class over here is basically the same. We have the GitHub actions attribute. However, we also have this import secret where we have a Docker username and Docker password, which we are going to use to log in into Docker. Small disclaimer, this secret over here, which is Docker password, you can use your Docker username and a Docker password, but that's not really the best approach. You would usually create an access token and store it inside the secrets. It's way more secure that way since you can track the usage of the access token and basically analyze it. TLDR, use an access token instead of the password. However, the parameter is still gonna be named Docker password for now. You'll see why in a little bit. So we have our build over here and it's basically just a single target. So how do we run it? Basically, we have this I build pipeline interface in here and Nuke allows us to create reusable interfaces which are basically reusable build steps that we can just rearrange in a different formation. In our case, the build pipeline over here is looking like this. So we have a Docker build, 
an integration test build step and the release build step. If we go over to the Docker build step over here, we can see that we have a lot of different parameters. Some of them are marked as secrets. And if you want to set up secrets inside your local machine, you'll have to run something like nuke.secrets. And we have Docker container artifacts and a list of Docker images that I have specified inside my build.cs. So over here, we can see that I want to build a habit tracker API image with a file named Docker file. The Docker file itself is found inside the build folder right here. It's a simple Docker file for an API. I'm going to close it right now. So coming back to my Docker build step, I'm retrieving Docker image tag based on public Docker hub, GitHub container registry, or any other container registry. You can implement that in here. Now, Inside here, we have our targets, the two targets. So it's build Docker file with artifacts where we iterate over the Docker images that we have defined over here. So if we go back to our Docker build, we can see that we basically build the Docker file, we create the Docker container. And if you create Nougat packages, you might want to copy the artifacts from the Docker container into a separate folder and then use the Nougat tasks to push them further. Also, we have this second target, which is in our case, push Docker artifacts, and it depends on our integration test builds. Pushing an image to a Docker registry that has not been yet tested is really dubious since you would not want to do that. But since we implement our build pipeline using different interfaces, this is the way to specify that this specific target depends on some previous target being executed. Now, if we go into the I integration test builds, it's a basic target, a basic step, run integration builds, where we build our API with a release configuration, then we just basically run the tests. Going back to my Docker build in here, we can see that over here we have a setup logging and this is a hack around the current issue with Docker where you'll have a terminal output of the Docker build with a lot of errors in there. So yeah, this is just a known issue and something that you will have to have in here if you run it via Docker. And over here we have our Docker login where we basically specify our authentication token in here into the set password and we set our username. By the way, these two are, as I said, secrets that are coming from GitHub itself that we're gonna specify in a little bit. And then for each Docker image inside the list itself, I'm just gonna push them to Docker and log the information itself. Going back to the build pipeline, the last step obviously is the release build. And in here we have a simple target, which is in our case, create release, depends on Docker build, push Docker artifacts. So we want to release only once the artifacts has been, have been pushed. And in here, you might want to, for example, call your CI CD system with an HTTP call to trigger a deployment by providing, for example, the image name or the system name, the uh, tag itself, etc. It's up to you to implement since it depends on from project to project. In our case, I'm just gonna log some information. By the way, Nuke is using Serilog as a logging provider, so you might want to configure it also. Going back to the build pipeline, this is basically a simple setup to run to specify the last step from the iBuild pipeline. We can also remove it from here and inside the build.cs specify instead of the default, the create release as the last step. This will not change the end result that we aim for. Now, if we go over to parameters, we can see that over here we have the Docker repository URL, name, as I said, the branch, the build counter, which for local environment, I prefer to have the slash, or oh sorry, dash pre-release or local environment tag over here if you run the build pipeline from your local machine. And on GitHub, for this purpose, I'm gonna use the workflow ID, uh, sorry, workflow instance ID. Now, once you run Nuke, it will result in this default pipeline YAML. As I said, we have the GitHub actions on top, which will create the default YAML. And over here, you can see that we have also the Docker username and the Docker password specified as secrets. In our case, this will be defined inside here. So inside the settings, you go to secrets and variables over to actions and you create your repository sub secrets, which are Docker underscore password or Docker underscore username. And this should match this, this two over here. And if we go over to the Docker build, you can see that uh, 
Nuke is basically using camel casing and underscore and pasting inside here underscores. In Nuke, there is a way to specify that all the parameters inside the single interface should start with Docker and you basically can remove this Smurf naming convention. But in the past, that has done more harm to me than good. So I prefer having this redundant Docker thingy in here. Setting it all up together, it will result in something like the following pipeline, which we can view over nuke dash dash plan. And this will generate the following view where we have our build Docker file with artifacts, running integration tests, pushing Docker con uh, artifacts, creating the release. And this is basically the run build, which is our target in here. Going back, it will resolve in the following workflow. So we have our Ubuntu latest. I'm just gonna maximize the screen real fast. So we have our run.build. And inside here, we can see that we have run all the steps, building Docker artifacts, running integration tests, pushing Docker artifacts, creating a release and running the build. And all the errors and warnings are also over here. So it's really easy to view them all. And if you've enjoyed this video, click the like button, subscribe to the channel. Also click the notification bell so you get notified when the next video comes out. And until then, have a nice one.